Thanks, Jen. Um, so today I'm here to talk about how to build frictionless tutorials with the Web Container API. So first, a little bit about myself. I'm Joanne Varven, a software engineer at Stackblitz, working primarily on Web Container. If you want to talk to me about Web Container things or tutorial things, you can reach out to me on Twitter under at Nemical, or also on GitHub. I try to look at them regularly. So when I say tutorial, I just want to clarify a few things because maybe we don't all mean the same thing. So tutorials are a form of documentation. And documentation is actually split into different groups. So different forms of documentation. The first form that most people think about when we say documentation is a reference. So if reference is information based, it's about you know APIs, fun function classes, and it gives you certainty so that you don't have to look into the code to see how the software works. And it's mostly for advanced users that already know about your software. Next, we've got how tos or guides. So those ones are goal oriented. It's about solving a specific problem step by step. Next, we've got explanation, which are understanding oriented. So it's about explaining why something works in certain ways, why your software even exists. So for instance, a good example would be why Vit? Why does it exist when we had Webpack? What problem did it solve? What did it brought? But so explanation are more for existing users, but it can also be for new users, you know, to buy them into your software or what you're building. And tutorials are about learning. They're learning oriented. So when someone doesn't know about your software, you want them to get started. You want them to gain a new skill by learning about your framework. And so that's where you're going to need tutorials. And actually, this diagram, I didn't come up with it. It's called Diataxis. And it uh, was introduced by Daniel Procida on his talk about uh, what nobody tells you about uh, documentation and was later uh, reused by Rich Harris on his talk on, on full documentation. I highly recommend that you watch this two talk if you haven't watched them because they're really useful. And if you want to learn more about the attacks, here's the link. OK, so there's actually different kind of tutorials. Because at one end of the spectrum, we have the teacher, which isn't really a, a tutorial. We kind of, you know, when you're with the teacher, we kind of say that you're doing a course. But it's it's the same idea because it's learning oriented. It's about someone taking you by the hand, helping you when you get stuck, and giving you a series of uh, exercises to complete so that you gain gain a new skill. So very similar to a tutorial if you think about it. But most people say when they say tutorial, they think about you know some website where you read through the step by yourself and you do you complete the exercise on your own. So I refer to that as a passive tutorial. And in the middle, we've got interactive tutorial, where essentially like setting up the environment, making sure you've got the right version of it, making sure you've got the right version of not, all of that is taken care of for you. And that's where the web container API comes in. And that experience, that interact, interactive experience is frictionless. And that's what the Web Container API is for. So let's dive in into that Web Container API because maybe you're not familiar with it. So it's actually the technology that powers TagBlitz. And it what it does is that it gives you a Web Container. And a Web Container is a developer-friendly environment where you've got lots of commands that you're probably using on a daily basis. But all of that run inside your browser as if there was like a mini operating system that was being installed when you visited the page that used the Web Container API. It does not really install um, uh, an operating system, but you get the idea. And right now, it's mostly focused on Node, but it supports a bunch of package manager like NPM, YARN, PNPM. So it's not just Node. It's actually the Node ecosystem that's at your end that you can use. And it also has experimental support for Python. Um, but this is very early days, so we don't have support for pip, for instance. If you want to learn more, you can go on webcontainers.io where you, you can start actually using it. But still, let's have a look like you know how it actually looks like to use it. Um, so first off, you import from the app web container slash API package the web container global. And you can boot that by just doing dot boot, which will create this iframe inside your page. 
um, that will hold all the node processes. So the next step, next thing we do is to spawn node uh, to run a script. Let's just assume that it was there. And so we've got a um, web worker that is going to be like a Node.js process and that is going to run our script. And our script think it's actually running a node. Next, we can listen for special events like server ready. Server ready is pretty convenient because it gives you like a URL that you can use on an iframe. And when you connect those two, if you spawn a process that will listen to an HTTP server in node, you actually get a preview that reflect the response from that server. So assuming that Astro server is rendering a, a GIF in that case, that's what you would get. There are actually really good examples out there of tutorials made with the Web Container API. Angular.dev and learn.svelte.dev. If you're not familiar with either Angular or Svelte, I highly recommend you to go through those tutorials because they're really the best way to get started with them. And I actually want to take some time to give a couple of shout outs to Rich Harris, now working at Vercel, who actually helped building the Web Container API uh, when he created LondonSvelte.dev, as well as Leonardo Ortiz and Pavel Kubiak from Monogram, who have built Angular.dev. And actually, it's not just them. There's also Anthony Fu, and there's also a lot of more people that have been involved in the process uh, and helping shaping the Web Container API. OK, and we also actually got a couple of learning from those people building those experiences. First is that it was relatively time consuming, which kind of makes sense because creating a tutorial in itself is a long and tedious process. But it's not just that. They haven't just built the content of their tutorial. They've also designed the website. They've also play, you know, integrated with the Web Container API. And the Web Container API has relatively low concern. So really what they wanted are like, higher level abstractions so that they can build uh, their tutorial and just focus on the content creation. And so actually today, I've got the pleasure to announce Tutorial Kit, which is exactly that. You can get started right now by doing NPM Create Tutorial, and it will guide you through a series of steps that will then let you have this, which is our default experience for Tutorial Kit, where you can have your tutorial content on the left, your editor so that learner can modify the code that you want them to modify. And all of that is a safe sandbox environment that you get without doing much effort. It's currently built with Astro and React. And we want to do a bit more than just that with Tutorial Kit. Long term, we want to build like a set of libraries to let you build tutorials. Because our default experience is Astro and React, and we know that people tend to prefer using their own framework. And so for that, we have a runtime that is framework agnostic so that you could use it with any library. And we started with React, but we want to support Svelte, Angular, Vue, and many more. And it's made to be highly customizable. So right now, the editor you just saw is made with Code Mirror. But in the future, we'd like to support Monaco as well. And actually, these components are already available right now. They are in alpha. And all of that is likely to change over time, but you can already start to play around with them today. So how does it work? How do you how do you create your tutorial now? So the first thing you do is you create the markdown file for your lessons. You structure them. We're going to see that in a minute. You put the code for that needs to be inside web container in special folders. No additional steps needed. No have to nothing to worry about like regarding you know the plugins to make sure they are being picked up and packed inside your code. And you can also tweak the theming by just modifying a single theme.css file. So let's have a look. So here we've got a tutorial, and it's folder base. So you have basic, which is the part, because every tutorial has parts, so part one basics. Then you have chapters inside every part, and every chapter has a couple of lessons. And so here's the content.md at the bottom is what you see on the right, where you've got, as you're probably already familiar if you use any uh, blog that, use that is marked on page, you've got a front matter, but you've got a couple of settings for that lesson. And then you've got the lesson content written as markdown. 
And actually, we the metadata, the front matter at the top, is inherited. Because often you, you want to configure things um, that will be the same for your entire tutorial. And you don't want to have to repeat yourself too much. Sometimes it's good. Um, so here, a good example is I want to run npm dev. Because npm dev is how I start my vid server in this case. And I want to also make sure vid is installed. So as prepare commands, I'm going to say, oh, you have to run npm install. And I could, I would typically put those inside the meta.md of my tutorial because that's where, you know, it makes more sense because they are the same for the entire tutorial. And there's a lot more metadata you can do. For instance, you can configure the previews. So here, it's bit listen on 5173. So I'm going to say, oh, open a preview on that port. And maybe you can, you want to tweak a little bit, you know, how it's being rendered because right now it's just, it would just say preview. So you save feet and now you've got feet. And you can actually show multiple previews because you probably notice that there's an S here. So here we can show the vtest dev server. Uh, sorry, the vtest uh, UI, for instance, on a different port. But if we don't want any of that, because maybe actually my tutorial is terminal based, right? So maybe I'm 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 making a tutorial about how to use an X. So in that case, I'm just gonna say I don't want any previews. So I set it to false. And for terminal, now I'm saying, oh, I want a terminal uh, panel, but I don't want the output panel of the processes. And I also want to restrict the set of comments that can be run. And all of that is just in the front matter and then inherited from anywhere you put it. So you can have combine everything, have chapters that are with the UI, some that are terminal focused, all of that, whatever makes sense to you. So let's do a quick demo. So here we've got a very simplistic uh, tutorial um, because I don't want you to lose, you know, what I'm trying to say. The, the focus is on tutorial kit, not my tutorial. So it's very simple. It's about computing the sum of two numbers. Um, and so here, the way I configured it, I have a single app you can see, which is a Vit app, and it's calling a function that is inside this module sum that you can see here in the file tree. And right now it's saying undefined, which makes sense because my function doesn't return anything. So let's pretend I'm the learner and I just, I'm just going to solve this problem because I'm really good at math. It's really hard math, right? Um, so I return A plus B and ta-da, one plus three is four, amazing. And I've solved the tutorials. Now I can, uh, sorry, the first lesson. So now I can move on. And now it's about adding a unit test. And you can see that Actually, this is different because now we only see a terminal, the preview is gone, and it's telling me that we should test my sum function that I've just written. I can actually see it there. Okay, so the problem is that I'm not actually super familiar with Vitesse, so I'm just going to click this solve button to see quickly what I, where I'm supposed to go. And I can see that, okay, I'm supposed to call test, and then there's a callback that then makes a check on sum. Okay, I think I get it. So let's try to do it. So I'm just going to make sure some works. And I'm going to use expect on sum11. One, one. And because I'm really good at math, I'm sure it's three, right? So let's try that with vtest. Running vtest. Oh, no, it didn't work. Mm, I guess I'm not that good at math. Yes, indeed. That must be two. Let's check that it thinks it's two. Yes, it does. So let's just change it. And voila. It passes. Amazing. If you're wondering how I created this, it wasn't that much effort. I created the tutorial with npm create tutorial demo TK. I got this folder layout. I created, actually modified the original lesson because it comes with a default lesson so that there's my preview. I want also the sum.js file to be open. I put the sum.js in here, also the solution in case in in case, sorry, the learner gets stuck. And my second lesson is just, you know, two dash adding the lesson. And see, and here we've got this, the test as well as the solution for the, for the test. And in here, again, we said we don't want any previews, but we still want the terminal uh, to, be, to be only showing uh, an actual terminal, not an output panel. And one thing I haven't actually really mentioned is the template. So if you think about it, to run v vtest, all of that, you need some packages and you need some configuration. And so here, this is what I have. So I've got vt and vtest set up already. 
uh, inside that package JSON that I've created, and I just dropped it inside the template's default folder, which is the default template that gets loaded. So this is all the files that are required for your environment. And you just place them here, and they get picked up automatically. And that's it. So if, you're, if you want to learn more, actually, we've got a workshop on Friday, this Friday, about building an interactive view playground uh, with Garrison, um, an engineer on our team at StackBits. I actually want to take some time to do some special things. So first one goes to Eric Simons, who came up with the idea of building Tutorial Kit and has been pushing really hard to make it open source and make sure we, it has everything to be successful. Dominic Helm, who has laid out the foundation of the project and is also an awesome human being and really nice to work with. Tomek, who has provided amazing feedback during the process of you know, testing tutorial kit, making sure it works well. It has no surprises, although probably does have a few, I'll be honest. It's still very hot. <laughs> um, Don, uh, Devon, sorry, uh, who has uh, created the design for tutorial kit, the default experience. Uh, Sam, who has been an awesome pair programming uh, uh, person to work with on, on tutorial kit, and also has made sure that it could be ready for today because it's open source right now. And actually, a lot more people that have all been involved in Tutorial Kit uh, in one way or another. And lastly, I want to thank you for watching my talk. And if you want to learn more, just go on tutorialkit.dev right now or github.com slash tagblitz slash tutorialkit, and you can get started. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. We do have a few questions. Uh, let's see. Are there any good video tutorial resources out there for learning more about web containers? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, we have, um, I'm not actually sure. So I'll be honest, I think um, the we have a couple of, we have made a couple of live stream to talk about the web container API. And I think there's uh, um, a work in progress um set of videos that are being put on the head uh, to learn more about web containers but right now the praise the best experience uh, is uh, on webcontainer.io but it's not a video tutorial but that would be a great addition i i do agree all right and what is a web container api so the web container api is really just um, at web container slash API package that lets you use web container inside your 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 website. So it's it's really um, just a simple you know node modules. You don't you don't have there's no surprise here. It, it's like any other packages inside of uh, the node ecosystem that you would import and and use in your front end application. Thank you. Uh, what other practical applications do you see the Web Container API powering? So that's an obvious use case, which is what uh, we do at StackBlitz, where it's a full editor experience inside your browser, where you have you know zero setup um, to to do. You just go on the link, uh, and then that's it. Um, other applications are you know anything around uh, AI, where you want to generate something and do everything inside the, the context of the browser without having to set up uh, a VM where the code would, would execute. Um, and there's actually lots of examples on webcontainers.io, uh, actually. Uh, highly recommend to check them out. <laughs> Very cool. And a couple more of why would someone choose a web container over running a cloud VM? So that's a really good question. The, the main difference is that where the compute is. Because when you have a, a cloud VM, the compute is in the cloud. So it's that different problem. Obviously, cost is one. But the thing is that you also have extra latency. You also have like, well, but if you just disconnect from the VM, then you know maybe um, then, then you have to, to restart again. Uh, so, you know, you know, don't have any offline experiences. Uh, but the other benefit is that because web container literally run in your browser, we reuse the cache of your browser. So that means that 
when you visit Tagris and you go again there, often it feels like almost instantaneous, which is sometimes surprising, sometimes expected. And the main reason is because actually everything is cached by your browser. So think of it as, um, you know, like, um, if you think actually of it like a Docker, like a, an alternative to Docker, is like a super more friendly way to use Docker because you just go on the link. You don't have to use Docker or even know about what is Docker. Um, but also that reuse the existing cache of your browser. It doesn't have any extra, you know, things you have to worry about because for Docker, for instance, by default, it will cache images. But if you don't pay attention, they grow over time and then boom, it just explode. Whereas here, it's all inside the context of your browser. So it's goes through the same cache uh, policy, essentially. Got it. Thank you. Uh, let's see. It's a super nice tool. How can we contribute? So uh, I would say go on github.com slash taglit slash tutorialkit and you get the project. It's still very early days. We might make some uh, big changes, but we would be really interesting to hear your thoughts. Feel free to just create an issue there. Uh, tell us what you're interested in. And then we are happy to, to guide you through creating your first PR. Awesome. Uh, let's see. How does Web Container API handle the sandbox internally? Does it use Docker containers and assign them to a client? It's a good question. It, it, it does not, actually. It, it, I keep saying Docker, I shouldn't. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's just in terms of experiences. But it, it has nothing to do. It's literally just using the API of your browser. So in if you think about a web browser, what it has to do when you navigate a website is that it has to provide a sandbox to make sure you're safe. You're safe to go on that, that website. It's not going to hack your machine and steal all your password secret and everything. And because browsers have to solve this really hard problem of sandboxing websites, then there's a perfect fit to actually sandbox untrusted code. Because when you go on StackBlitz and I share a project with you, maybe you don't trust the code I'm sharing with you. And it's actually perfect that it's running entirely in your browser because it's running in the sandbox of the browser. Also, it's very different from running it locally. So if you are looking at a malware code, high chances is that they're not actually looking at hacking web container and your browser at the same time. They're more looking at hacking just your environment, like maybe stealing your SSH keys or whatever you have in your home folder. Um, so in terms of how do we do it? So we use iframes, which are you know an initial uh, sandbox primitives, and then we have a sort of uh, hardened layers to to you know safe keep things so that even inside a web container you're relatively safe. For instance, a good example of this is if you want to use uh, private packages on StackBlitz, we don't actually store the tokens uh, anywhere inside the web container environment. They're stored outside inside a web worker that runs in the main. Uh, in the context of the of the editor or the the parent page, if if you will, and uh, the main benefit of this is that when a request is made, it's just routed through that external worker, and the tokens are added at this point, but never inside the web container sandbox. The tokens are visible anywhere, which make it much more safer than on local. And we can do those things because, well, we're not on local. Like we have the full control of the OS, if that makes sense. So we have those opportunities to make those uh, really nice changes. Thank you. And last question, uh, and I think this is a great one. Can you explain to us what is a web container? <laughs> That's a big question. Hmm. What is a web container? Um, so it's a technology that's supposed to emulate uh, a mini operating system, but Either you can see it that way, or you can just see it as a node runtime, like a really close to node runtime. It's not actually node, but it's very similar. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> but it's All right, I like thing. it. There's a lot more to it. It's it's a bit vague question. It's OK, though. <laughs> <laughs> Follow up. Let's. Uh, we'll, we'll see more and go check out Stack Blitz. And so thank you so much <laughs> for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks.